I grew up in that. Uh, I, I grew up in two churches, essentially. One was in Johor, one in Sri Kemangan, but both were Pentecostal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so your entire family went to the church together. It kind of was like a tradition. It's a norm for you, right, since you were growing up? Yeah. Okay. Right. So yeah. what was your experience like growing up in the church? My experience? No. Um, where should I start? It was a very normal thing. It was a very godly thing to do. It is if you don't do that, you are. It is a pandan thing. This okay. is at least in my family. Yeah. We never skip church, no matter where we are. Even if we are on holidays, we still don't skip church. And my father also made the point for us to serve in whatever capacity there is in church. So we were involved in music. We were involved in ushering. For me, mainly in music at yeah, that time. But that was that embedded mentality. We should go to church every Sunday. We should serve in church. And uh, you could see, at least in my family, it was a very top priority. And even if I were to say that I want to become pastor next time, yeah. they would be very happy, actually. Yeah. Maybe not quite so now because, like... <laughs> It's a slightly different kind of pastor, uh, I guess, in, yeah. in, in your minds. But still, it's, it's better than a lot of other things. <laughs> yeah. To be a pastor, yeah. It, it's, it's Christian ministry is respected yeah. in my life. Yeah. What was your Christianity like? What was my Christianity like? It was a weekend thing. Okay. Yeah. Even though it was a serious thing, yeah. it's something that I couldn't skip during the weekends, but it is a weekend thing. In uh, During the weekdays, I'll just mind my own business, do my own thing. I'll try my best to be so-called godly. Uh, I will try my best to not cuss in school. There, in fact, there, I can count on my hand how many times that I've actually cussed in school. Wow. And it was, it was not frequent. And my friends all know me not to cuss. My friends all know me to also go to CF, there is that guy who goes to CF every Friday. They'll make fun of me as well. All my life, it's been quite that thing. And, but CF is also a Friday thing, right? So, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Or maybe just Friday and Sunday. It's, it's the church life. And after that, I get back to just minding whatever business I have. Studies, uh, sports, I was really in you know, heavily involved in sports and uh, sometimes music last time back in school as well. It was pretty much that my, my Christian experience, Christian life has been like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For most of my life. Yeah. So eventually you discovered we found theology, right? What, was, yeah. what, what happened? What caused you to want to uh, get into that? Oh, before we found the theology even, I, was, I had this phase where I decided to recommit my life to God, you could say. I became more uh, desirous of God's ministry, I think, simply put. I became more serious in church. At that point, I started to take seriously more, you know, the faith. I listened to sermons more. Before that, I would always sleep at sermons (laughs) in church. Uh, but from then on, I I knew that I had to commit my life to God. And w- well, a snapshot of what led to that is uh, I almost had a breakup. <laughs> and uh, I mean, maybe to some of you it's a bit petty, but like, it really affected me. Okay. It was not an actual breakup, it was yeah. an almost breakup. <laughs> okay. Was this Carmen or was this someone else? It was Carmen, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there was an almost breakup phase, and... It really got me down. I think I was legit depressed for at least two to three weeks. Okay. It really affected my daily functioning at that. But that really got me to recalibrate, so, so-called recalibrate my life. I'm like, okay, actually, why am I so sad? I never thought that I would be so sad going through a relationship, you know, going through a breakup. And it just got me to question what is life all about. And at least what was instilled at that point was that 
I sort of knew that, okay, life is to glorify God. I didn't have a lot of content in that idea, but I knew that that was it. I should do that, right? Okay, so if I should do that, then, okay, let's, let's get serious, right? So from then, I started becoming more serious in church. I listened more. Now, what led to the reformed phase in my life was, in church, there was this one time, my pastor played a mini clip of John Piper. It was four to five minutes. Okay. It was nothing much about reformed theology necessarily. But that clip was John Piper talking about praise and our joy in praise. And he quoted C.S. Lewis as well. But that was, I, in that short, short four to five minutes, I learned more than I could have ever learned, perhaps in my memory or, you know, yeah. <laughs> listening to sermons. Um, that really struck a note with me and I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> I just like how this guy talks, okay? <laughs> and also the content which, uh, which he, 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 he spoke about. Yeah. I've never quite heard anything like that, so I decided to look up more of John Piper's content. Yeah. And I mean, long story short, one thing led to another. I'm just, I'm just binge, uh, binging John Piper content after John Piper content. It led me to know more about uh, the gospel. It led me to know more about Reformed theology, and I stumbled upon Calvinism at that point. At first, I, I thought, like, wait, this, this sounds really controversial. I got into it more. I looked into scripture, yeah. looked at a lot of verses, a lot of... Uh, scripture that I never quite paid attention to before and like wow okay this makes sense okay this is really important in scripture how am I supposed to explain for instance yeah. Romans 9 or how am I supposed to explain our total depravity our utter need for God to save us and we are totally depraved yeah. we are totally against God in our, in our essence and our being right this is Romans 3 and I saw it as biblical from from then on, I, just, I was just convinced that, okay, Reformed theology seems pretty bi biblical. And I, I think I got to believe in this, right? And then, uh, back in church, I was trying to convince my pastors of that as well. Yeah. But obviously, they didn't believe it. They didn't... They didn't uh, they were not convinced that that's biblical, but uh, but they didn't want to engage much with me in you know scriptural debate in the first place. Uh. But yeah, that was what made me reform back then. This is the this snapshot of okay. <laughs> my reformed journey. Yeah, back in my old church. Yeah. Yeah. How long did you, I mean, stay in that church? Because obviously you're in CRC now, so you you must have left somewhere uh, after that. But how long did you stay there trying to convince your pastors? One year? Okay. Around there? Yeah. 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 So one year from the point of when I first spoke to my pastor. And within that one year, there were several junctures. I tried to talk with them. I tried, I tried to have biblical discussions with them. But from what I can remember now, we actually rarely opened the Bible. Well, that was my intention, but I think my pastors were at a different wavelength than me. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. They were as keen as me to open the Bible and talk through these issues yeah. and debate through. Yeah. Okay. So... After that, you uh, started to attend CSC, or was there another church that you went to before CSC? After that, I pretty much came straight to the CRC. Okay. How did you find CRC? I Google Reformed okay. Church in Malaysia. Okay. Then CRC was there, yeah. Okay, got it. So, what was the first CRC gathering that you attended? I attended a Christmas gathering, but this was before. This was six months before I officially left my previous church, actually. But the first one was the Christmas gathering. And I just remembered 
It was Adrian Miller in pitching. Okay. And I was I really appreciated the gospel centeredness yeah. in the church. I really appreciate how he argued for uh, Jesus' life and death and resurrection. And I remember leaving that gathering thinking, wow, you know, if I were to invite my non-Christian friends to church, this one would have been a really good experience. Mm. And uh, But yeah, after that, I still stuck with my previous church to try to see how much change I could bring yeah. to that ministry there before eventually leaving you know, in six months time. Yeah. Okay. Then did you start coming regularly to CLC after after yeah. that? Okay. I did. Yeah. What was that like? Because I, I can I mean I can kind of guess that it might be a bit of a culture shock or but it is definitely very different from the previous church. So how was the first few experiences of in CLC like? I can only remember very good memories, very wow, okay. good experiences yeah. with the first few times. Yeah. So the first time was the Christmas gathering, right? The second time was to get it. It was evangelistic. Yeah. Well, that was the first time I experienced a dining sort of setup yeah. in church, yeah. and doing. But it was pretty cool, because it was really friendly to newcomers. Yeah. But also at the same time, the sermon was Romans, Romans three. Not Romans 3, sorry, Romans 1. Yeah. Get it, sermon, talking about total depravity, talking about our offense against God. And I remember Pastor Robin being very vivid about that. Yeah. And I was really mind blown. Uh, not only because, well, this is the first time I've heard Romans 1 being preached in an, an evangelistic sermon, but also the intensity in which Pastor Robin preached it was really gripping and unfortunately I didn't get to bring my non-believer friend then yeah. this was I think my second time coming to CRC okay. and I, I probably wasn't too aware that oh this is an evangelistic you know, yeah. series that we're in as well at that time um, but again I can imagine if I brought my, my non-believer friend this is exactly what I wanted them to hear their sin, their offense against God and God's judgment that's coming upon them. And that's why you need the gospel. That's why the need for salvation in the first place. So, I was really mind blown. Uh, I think uh, at least the same for that second experience in CRC. And I remember walking out of church and then Vanessa, she was hosting that day. And she was just like, oh, hey, uh, how, how did you find? How did you find a sermon? You know? And then I, I just told her, it was the bomb, and then I left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my second memory of oh, Okay, <laughs> got it. So, okay, that was get it. Um, yeah. Then what was the first, um, I guess you can say, outside of get it Sunday gathering that you, that you attended after that? Do you remember what the topic was? Hmm. I think... It was the spirituality series. Wow. It was either yeah. First Corinthians or some others. After get it, I I remember my experience being more of okay, not more of but a lot of confusion taking place. Yeah. <laughs> because CRC has very good but heavy content as well. And I needed time to understand a lot of things before I could actually understand more. Yeah. Uh, what CRC's sermons were trying to communicate. I realized more and more that, okay, I don't know the Bible as much as I thought. Because I may know, as in, I may know what happened in the Bible, some events that took place, but what is the significance of that event? For instance, David and Goliath, or, or whatever that happened in the Old Testament. And, and my theology wasn't clear and sharp enough. I had a lot of content from reading Desiring God, from reading John Piper and the other reformers, but I couldn't quite, you know, seamlessly see it through the scriptures. My theology, my biblical theology wasn't strong. 
So I needed time to appreciate more and more uh, CRC's content. Mm. But over time, it just got easier. Long story short, just, you just got to listen more and more. <laughs> the more you listen, the more I sat through Sunday sermons, um, the more I understood that I could bring forward to the next Sunday to, you know, to pick up the pieces and to learn more. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you, you became a membership candidate mm. soon after that, or uh, was it a slow process of understanding what membership matters? I wanted to become a member. I just didn't know how how to become a member. Then, yeah. I I wanted to become a member right from the get go. Oh, okay. But I thought I don't know. I thought there was someone who was going to approach me or anything like that. But I soon found out that I had to approach specific people <laughs> for a membership, to be a membership candidate. And it was six months into CRC that uh, Carmen and I approached, I think Ryan or someone else, uh-huh. to become a member. And then a few months after that, we started a membership course. Why, why was it such an easy decision to make? Because I know that it's not a very popular thing, I would say. Uh, in right. Malaysian Christianity at least to be members of the church. Right. Well, in my life, I knew it to be important to be a member of the church. It's just, uh, I didn't have a clear process for how that should take place. What I saw in CRC was a really clear process of how it takes place. It's through the membership course, it's through understanding, you know, establishing and understanding with one another. You know. it's, it's more like before that, before CRC, I, my understanding of membership was a pretty assumed one. It's like, okay, if I go to church, if I commit to this church, sort of like, I, I, I'm sort of like a member already. Yeah. Okay. But there is that... Uh, important process of like you know inking it down <laughs> it's like marriage right mm. you covenant with one another and it's that significance of me covenanting with the church and saying that I am going to commit to you that that really mattered and that's what I saw and appreciated in CRC I was like oh wow yeah actually it does make sense it does make sense that I have to treat this seriously as to you know as to as to really Establish even clear terms. Okay, what C- CRC is about. Am I okay with being on board with what CRC is about, right? Yeah. And what the Church of Jesus Christ is actually is a, is about. It's a very institutional experience uh, that is going on in membership. So that is that is what I saw. What I was really enlightened by in CRC's membership process. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, you mentioned that uh, you were kind of looking for a reformed church before you came to CRC. Mm. So now that you've been in CRC for a few years now, um, how do you think CRC portrays or lives out this reformed church label, if you want to name it? There's this one line by Pastor Robin in one of his sermons that really stuck with me until now. Verbatim, I can remember, Christ rules over his church by his word. And I think CRC really upholds that. I think that is what being reformed is about. And, you know, in all of the life of the church, being reformed means that you see the word as boss over everything. Because that is how God has ordained for it to be in the first place, right? So, pastors cannot be above the word. And our own logic, our own reasoning cannot be above the word. Our own subjective experiences, um, emotions, testimonies cannot be above the word. And through and through, I just really see that in CRC. Uh, That's it. Yeah. Summing of what I'm thinking now. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe as a last question. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So I think a lot of Christians would have this perception that why, why do we need to be reformed? You know, why can't we just be Christians? Are Christian means Christian. It doesn't matter what denomination we come from. That's, I mean, what we, what our differences are between each other. Why do we have to be reformed? Why does it matter? Yeah. You have a, what, what would you answer to that? Yeah. I feel like I'm going through a, the membership. <laughs> membership course <Yeah>. questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, In history, in the history of the church, you see that being Christian is not as simple as just, okay, we just believe in the Bible. Because out of that came a lot of heresies. Out of that still came a lot of um, deviations, so to speak, in the church, right? Corruption in the church. In the first place, why we needed to have a reformation, so to speak, from the previous Catholic church, right? The Roman Catholic church was because they ended up trusting tradition and reason above scripture already. So there is a clear need for us to understand that, okay, the word is boss over the church that we should subject everything in church to the authority of the word. Yeah. That's what being reformed is all about. It's not about labels. It's not about you know, uh, choosing one brand over another. Uh, being reformed really is this clear understanding that, and clear conviction that there's no other way in which Christ ultimately and finally has authority over his church. There's no other infallible authority and no other authority that's sufficient in itself to rule over the church than the word and uh, I mean there's just there's just so many deviations in the course of history either you uphold tradition like how the Roman Catholics did uphold tradition over the word or you uphold your own reasoning your own logic over the word as liberalism and right now I would say Perhaps we are in this phase of upholding our personal experiences and maybe mixing a bit with our personal logic as well. Uh, our experiences and emotions over the word, the authority of the word. I mean, I challenge anyone to just question someone's uh, individual testimony, see what will happen. It's almost like violating a very sacred, unspoken rule okay. that you shouldn't question anyone's spiritual experience. If they share a testimony, you shouldn't go like, uh, okay, but don't you think that the word, when, when in the Bible it says this, that means that uh, this part of your testimony is a bit wrong? That you're you, can, you can't say anything like that because, <laughs> you know, we are, uh, we are supposedly, right, supposed to take everybody's individual experiences as like, okay, wow, I mean, this is God working. But there's no other final authority, ultimate authority, other than the word. And everything needs to be subjected to that. So, there's always a need, at least history has shown, uh, that there's always a need to emphasize the word is above everything. Yeah.